Unless you've been living under a rock, it's unlikely that you haven't heard about all electric automobiles, given the rising popularity of firms like Tesla and General Motors. Questions are arising about how automakers should advance the technology as electric vehicles spread across the automobile industry. Many believe hybrid autos are a complete waste of time. Keep watching to find out the latest news. Firstly, are hybrid vehicles actually unnecessary? According to GM President Mark Royce, the best approach to make the switch is to completely skip hybrid vehicles and introduce electric models to the market. Several manufacturers, including Toyota, have been employing hybrids to help with the switch to an all-EV portfolio. But Royce thinks this strategy is not needed. Royce said he wouldn't use hybrids to dilute their investments. The profitability picture is pretty different if you look at some of the other firms that are doing or have signaled that they're going to have an all-electric portfolio. These remarks are consistent with past General Motors claims regarding the company's growing electric portfolio. The Detroit-based company not only plans to sell 30 electric models globally by 2025, but also expects those same models to turn a profit during that same period. Additionally, Chevy and GMC are slated to follow Cadillac and Buick by 2035 in making the switch to an all-electric portfolio. Therefore, GM's investment in hybrid technology doesn't make much sense given that its EV plans are already taking shape and becoming more aggressive. In reality, Mary Barra, CEO of GM, has publicly stated that GM customers simply aren't interested in hybrid cars. It's crucial to remember that GM does sell hybrid vehicles despite all of this opposition. The 2019 Chevy Volt was the last hybrid vehicle manufactured in North America but the General still sells a lot of hybrids in China thanks to its SAIC-GM joint venture. The Cadillac XT6, Cadillac XT4, Chevy Orlando, Cadillac XT5, and Chevy Monza are a few well-known examples. Next, how do hybrid vehicles work out for the environment? All of us are wondering whether hybrid vehicles are truly better for the environment. Hybrid vehicles still use internal combustion engines that burn gasoline or diesel, but they are more fuel efficient than standard vehicles. These automobiles use less fuel and emit fewer hazardous gases into the atmosphere because they also include electric motors supporting the engine. The improvement of air quality in many large cities is one of the top advantages of hybrid vehicles. Owners of hybrid cars can operate them solely on electricity, especially for short distances and at slower speeds. Hybrid vehicles aren't entirely green right now. It's because making these cars still uses a significant amount of energy. However, because they emit fewer emissions over the course of their lifetime, they are still among the most environmentally responsible options available for cars. Due to the lithium-ion batteries required to power them, hybrid car manufacturers emit greater emissions as compared to traditional vehicle production. The energy used to manufacture hybrid vehicles accounts for around a third of their life lifetime carbon dioxide emissions. However, as technology advances, the pollution produced by the production of hybrid and electric vehicles will decline. Coming up, are hybrids just fake electrics? PHEVs, or plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, are frequently promoted as stepping stones on the road to completely electric automobiles. However, there is a flaw in this understanding of FEVs. Recent research demonstrates that their real real-world CO2 performance falls well short of official values obtained during the required European WLTP test cycle. Julia Poliskanova, Senior Director for Clean Transportation, said that plug-in hybrids are fake electric vehicles created for tax benefits and lab testing. Rather than actual driving, their experiments reveal that automobiles pollute more than they claim to, even under ideal circumstances and with a fully charged battery. Carbon emissions can soar out of control if you don't drive them carefully. She said that governments ought to continue funding these with billions of taxpayer money. It is also important to keep in mind that a FEV will cut emissions when correctly selected and operated if operated under WLTP driving cycle conditions. The use case for a FEV, however, is unique to that specific model and to your personal use case falling inside that driving cycle. Additionally, you will
will need to consider your FAV decision if your use case changes. For example, if you change jobs and now have a long daily commute that exceeds the battery range. A FAV will, however, function for you, provided you use it mostly within its EV-only range, routinely recharge it via a power outlet before it runs out, and turn off that option until it is absolutely required to utilize it. Finally, why is Switzerland banning electric vehicles? According to reports, Switzerland intends to outlaw electric vehicles. Officials in the nation have devised a proposal that would limit power usage in order to minimize blackouts and power outages, according to a report in the Telegraph. Switzerland will be the first nation to do so if it takes place. About 60% of Switzerland's power comes from hydropower, making hydropower the primary source of the country's energy needs. However, throughout the winter, productivity decreases. Additionally, the nation imports electricity from Germany and France, which are neighbors and are currently experiencing an energy crisis due to the conflict in Ukraine, just like the rest of Europe. Russia, a significant oil and and gas exporter invaded Ukraine, causing an energy shortage and forcing European nations who relied heavily on Russian imports to diversify their sources of supply. So Switzerland is preparing for a potential blackout. According to the plan, the nation intends to limit the amount of energy used in structures and may even outlaw concerts, plays, and sporting events. If things go worse, Switzerland intends to restrict the usage of electric vehicles to just the most necessary journeys. In other news, plug-in hybrid trucks by General Motors. According to a recent report from the USA, General Motors GM is getting ready to integrate the best aspects of battery electric and hydrogen powertrains in its pickup trucks. According to GM Authority, medium-duty pickup trucks that go on sale as early as 2026 may have hydrogen fuel cells and sizable lithium-ion battery packs, making them hydrogen plug-in hybrids. They believe the battery pack would have less capacity than an identical pack used to power a pure BEV, but it would still have enough power to serve as the electric motor's primary power source. After 2025, General Motors intends to offer hydrogen fuel cell technology in its medium-duty trucks with badges between 4500 and 6500. However, it hasn't specified what that will look like. The modest battery pack seen in most most fuel cell cars is continuously topped off by the hydrogen fuel cell stack. The 1.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery in the Toyota Mirai is present, but it cannot sustain the vehicle's power for more than a small moment. Instead, it's there to make sure that the car's electric motors can always access energy. For some owners, the best of both worlds is the combination of a power source like a gasoline or diesel engine that can be refueled easily with a larger battery pack capable of between 50 and 100 kilometers of driving on its own. Moving on to how will plug-in hybrids work? The battery and electric motor of a petrol or diesel FEV enable an automobile to provide zero emission mobility in some situations without the range anxiety or restrictions associated with electric vehicles. It's unclear what advantages a battery pack for GM trucks running on hydrogen fuel would have, given that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles don't produce any carbon dioxide to begin with. In the absence of hydrogen, the battery pack might increase the vehicle's range or be utilized to run external appliances while the vehicle is stationary without using hydrogen. But don't be shocked if you see the same technology appearing in the GM and Honda lineups. Honda has revealed intentions to market a plug-in hybrid hydrogen CRV in the United States as part of their agreement to develop electric and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Although it's prevalent in SUVs and passenger vehicles, plug-in hybrid technology isn't yet widely used in utes or trucks. Mitsubishi is anticipated to provide a plug-in version of the following Triton, and Ford has all but confirmed the Ranger would eventually use a FEV powertrain. Finishing off with GM's Bright Drop, first partnership with Canada. At the same time, 
that DHL Express Canada was revealed as Bright Drop's first customer outside of the United States, the first electric delivery trucks began to roll off the assembly lines at the startup unit of General Motor Company's new facility in Canada. To produce Bright Drop Zevo delivery trucks, GM converted its 2 million square foot Cami assembly plant in Ingersoll, Ontario, over the course of seven months and at the cost of more than $2 billion. The facility previously produced the gasoline-powered Chevy Equinox. According to Bright Drop chief executive Travis Katz, opening the retooled plant is a huge step to offering EVs at a huge scale. By 2025, he projects that the factory will produce 50,000 Zevo electric vans annually. In the past, Bright Drop produced vans in a makeshift facility in Michigan. It has previously given FedEx Corporation, a package delivery company, 150 electric trucks. The company's other customers include Walmart and Verizon Communications. That's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching. What do you think of hybrid vehicles? And do you think they're unnecessary? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.